What's going on, everyone? It has been a minute, but welcome back to another episode of the EPM show. I had to take a little break. Big announcement. My wife and I just welcomed our first child on December 27th, 2023. And so we're adjusting to parenthood, but super excited to be back with you on the EPM show. And this is all things enterprise performance management. And remember, we're here to give you an unfair career advantage. Our first episode back after the break is with Kevin Moreno. He is the Anaplan lead at Navon. Now, Navon is a software development company in the travel industry. And prior to leading Anaplan at Navon, Kevin had a really successful career as a consultant, both at EY and Spalding Ridge in their Anaplan practices. And he came on the show today to talk to me about just his journey and what it takes to succeed in his mind in the Anaplan ecosystem. And some of the things that I loved in this episode that I think you will love as well are first, how leading with context can help you make a massive impact on the business that you support. That's critically important, especially if you're at a customer or making the transition from consulting to customer side. He has a lot of great insights and firsthand experience on how he navigated that transition. And then also the importance of EQ, that's emotional intelligence as a servant leader and that's kind of Kevin's North Star in his career is really, really inspiring just perspective in his mind on what it means to be a leader and what he strives for as a leader in his career. And then also how Kevin built a successful career focusing on mastering his technical skill set first and then authentic relationship building on top of that. He's got a really great balance between those two critical components of building a successful career in the EPM space. And then finally, why finance transformation is never a straight line. I'll give you a hint. It's all about starting where you are. I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you take away a number of unfair career advantages. Check it out. Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing great, Chad. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Pumped, pumped to have you on the show today. So just so the audience can get to know you a little bit, give me your career flyover in 60 seconds or less. Ready, go. Yeah, so to start, I graduated from The Ohio State University and specialized in accounting and entrepreneurship. I began my career at, at EY, spent about you know two and a half years there in their risk advisory practice. A lot of the engagements I was involved in were centralized around risk process controls from an IT perspective. And then I recently you know, realized that it's not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so I pivoted to the EPM space and joined Spotting Ridge. And that was really my, my first experience in the EPM space in general, more specifically Anaplan. So I spent about two and a half years there and then most recently joined my client, actually one of my clients at Spalding Ridge back in November of 2021. And so at Navon, I'm the Anaplan lead, looking to expand current use cases that we have in Anaplan and also looking to stand up the, the early stages of an Anaplan Center of Excellence. You crushed it. So Kevin, tell me, tell the audience really quickly what Navon does as a company, I think you're on your software developer, but give me an idea of what they do and their value prop as well. Yeah. So Nabon, so we are a company travel booking company, and we also do the expansion expense management side of things and also offer a corporate credit card. So if you kind of think of the whole, you know, travel journey, whether that's visiting a client or visiting a, a different office at your current company, right? We really take care of everything from the start of when you book your travel to the, the very end of it, when you uh, do the expense management. Fantastic. Kevin, one of the things before we really dive into meat of the content, we always ask a fun question to folks, just follow the audience and continue to get to know you better. My question for you today is if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? It's a good question. I, I think the ability to be able to, to time travel, I just think it'd be really cool to be able to go back uh, through different eras, especially with like sports and music, right? And just be able to kind of see that live. Um, you know, I'm a big basketball fan, so there's always that debate of, you know, Jordan versus Kobe versus LeBron, right? And to actually be able to see, you know, Jordan play live because that was definitely before my day, you know, I think would be, you know, some good perspective. Got it. So that, so you would go back in time to watch Michael Jordan play basketball? Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll still say that, you know, Kobe Bryant's better. <laughs> It's fair. Fair. That's cool. Anywhere else you would go? Oh, probably way back, like in the early start of like maybe the, the history of the U.S., right? Before mm -hmm. even like technology was in place. And 
I feel like it'd be really cool at that time just to kind of experience what other people were going through living during that moment of time. If you kind of think about it, everyone just kind of, you know, stood in one place, right? You know, traveling maybe 10, 20 miles in one day was a journey, right? Yeah. And I, just to be able to experience that would just be some cool perspective to have. Yeah. No, that's awesome. It was, it was, it was unheard of to travel like 10, 20 miles. Like you didn't do that often. That was a big deal back in the day. So no, that's, Every, that's a new discovery essentially. So. Yeah. That's a cool answer. The, the ability to time travel. But Kevin, let's jump into Anaplan stuff. Tell me a little bit about, you, you know, you started in consulting, right? You, you went EY, Spalding Ridge, and now you're in industry. Tell me about how that's ch your transition from consulting to industry has changed the way that you maybe approach leadership and influence in your organization and just the, the, the stakeholders and business partners that you serve. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think it's definitely a night and day difference when it comes to trying to lead or influence the, the group of people that you're working with. I personally think it's a, a lot easier in consulting, right? Typically during a project, there's alignment from the start. There's a, a set timeline and a set budget. And, you know, typically if you put the constraints of, you know, time and money together, it's naturally going to be on top of everyone's, you know, priority list. And when I first joined Avon, which is my first industry role, I really experienced the complete opposite of that, right? Working with different stakeholders that might have other competing priorities or, you know, that might not have the bandwidth. And it was really my, my first experience, you know, working with teams that are siloed. And so in trying to address this challenge that I was facing, I really leaned on one of our company values, which was to lead with context, right? At the time, my day-to-day -day responsibilities were strictly Anaplan. And so I asked to become the, the finance business partner to our talent team. So the rest of our team is you know, tied to a specific function of the company or tied to a business unit of the company. And I thought to be able to gain that perspective that, you know, my peers had was really key, you know, for me to be able to, you know, get that buy-in for Anaplan that I needed for my stakeholders. And so another specific example, I kind of hone in on that value in, when it comes to the enhancements I make in Anaplan. And so we just recently, you know, completed a project where we integrated the tools that make up our headcount planning process. And so the way our process works, obviously the plan starts in Anaplan and we've integrated all that information uh, to feed into Greenhouse, which is our ATS tool, you know, then eventually gets, you know, pushed into Workday and back into Anaplan to close the loop. But, you know, when we kind of think of all the different inputs to create that single rec, right, you're getting inputs from different parts of the company, right? You know, the people team might have a better say in the job profile, but you'll have the compensation team advise on the comp and equity ranges. You know, finance might own what cost, cost center to put this in, rec in. Then also you have, the, you know, the hiring manager and the recruiter. And so in, in kind of building the solution and trying to get buy-in, I was able to kind of show how not this only solves the issues that you're facing with this current process, but also, you know, give you that additional context of, you know, the issues that other teams are facing and how we could solve that. I love that. And, and thank you for sharing some specific examples. It's cool that you, of all places, decided to be the finance business partner to talent and getting into the people side of the business. I'm super curious, just, just for the audience and kind of giving us context, tell me a little bit more at a high level about just the Anaplan journey that Nevada is on in terms of like use cases. You obviously have headcount planning. What else exists and is out there right now that y'all are working on? Yeah, so with the initial implementation, I really focused on, on the P&L, right, as part of phase one. And then when I joined, you know, after Spotting Ridge, we, we really doubled down on our headcount planning. And so our, you know, salaries and, and wages and benefits make up the, the bulk of our, our OPEX. And so we thought it was very key to have a, an accurate forecast for that. And so with that, again, you know, expanded that to integrations with different tools. And then also other different areas of the business. So we work closely with the tax team. They rely on, you know, finances forecasts for a lot of different things. And so we've also brought in Carta data to be able to produce a stock-based comp forecast for them. And then we'll take kind of our, our P&L forecast and also have that lead to our transfer pricing model for the tax team so they can determine all the, you know, the intercompany transfers. And then also after we set up the P&L, we built the, the balance sheet and cash flow model, right? And so it'll just flow naturally into our balance sheet. And give us a, a pretty accurate picture of, you know, what the cash balance and cash burn would look like. Thank you for that. When one of the things you talked about is leading with context and hearing that at the beginning and then hearing a little bit about the Anaplan journey that y'all are on, you started with, started with P&L management, 
obviously, like you said, headcount and people is going to make up a huge percentage of that. So just eight from 80, 20 effectiveness perspective, I see that it makes sense to start there with, that's a big chunk of your spend. When you walked into the talent team as the finance business partner, and you were focused on leading with context, what did that look like on a day-to-day basis in terms of how you give, how you deliver information, the questions that you ask, things like that. Can you take me into a little bit of your tactical approach, maybe with a recruiting leader or something like that? Yeah. You know, I think it was first trying to get both parties together, right? Finance and the talent team and trying to get them to understand what are the key focus areas, you know, for each team, right? So for the the talent team, I, I think the data that they need from, you know, finance of what the headcount plan is, they need that data daily, right? It's something that can't wait in a month or two, right? They're, they're working with candidates on the daily. And so making sure that they have the most up-to-date, you know, recent information that's sourced from Anaplan is very important. So I think once we kind of you know, established that, that understanding between the two teams of understanding like what they cared about. It was very easy to kind of, you know, get that buy-in with Anaplan. And at the same time, you know, we, we really use Anaplan as the centralized source of truth when it comes to our headcount planning. And so, you know, previously the process was that there were a lot of, you know, downloaded Excel files, outdated G sheets that were, you know, shared across different departments. And so now we were able to, you know, leverage Anaplan as the central source of truth for anything headcount related. As you were talking, I was thinking about the why. The why is so important. It was important for finance to understand, hey, why does talent need this data on a daily basis, right? They need it because they're making offers to candidates. There's jobs out there that are posted. You're actively sourcing. So you've got to know where you are financially, right? On everything. And and if you're in negotiation processes or whatever it would be throughout the talent acquisition process. If you're making offers, you got to know where you're standing and what your, what your preferred range is, right? I'm a headhunter, so I know how this works. We see what the, what, the, what the range is on the job posting, but it's usually massive, whereas there's really within that a much smaller optimal range that they're looking for based on budget, based on what they think a competitive market compensation package looks like and things like that. So, no, thank you for sharing that example. I think that's super, super important for a lot of our audience to hear when it comes to making that transition from consulting into industry. Because like you said, when you're a consultant, you're coming in as the expert, you have credibility, part of, partly because of the price tag that's attached to those engagements. Exactly. But now in industry, you've had to work a lot harder to elevate your influence and build those relationships, put your head and, and your mind kind of into the mind of someone who's in for you talent, because that's, that's who you support. And that's what's led to you being able to have an influence and have an impact. So I love, I love that question for you, Kevin, what do you feel like, as you look back on your career at consulting and now you're in industry, obviously, what do you feel like has been some keys to success for you? in building a career in the Anaplan ecosystem? Yeah, I'll probably break it down to, you know, different stages of my EPM career. You know, at the beginning, uh, I really just wanted to to master my technical skills, right? So I really put in the, the hours, you know, to be able to get better at it. And so just outside of my, you know, client responsibilities, I got involved in internal initiatives, whether that's part of the sales process and pursuits, right? And, you know, other forms of internal initiatives, because I, I know back at Spotting Ridge, we used Anaplan for our internal reporting, right? So I was able to get more experience with Anaplan builds that way. And then later on in my career, I, I thought it was, you know, very key to be able to learn how to, you know, step back and see the bigger picture and be able to connect the dots, right? And, you know, from a consulting perspective, that may be cross-functional selling or identifying, you know, new opportunities at your client you know, to be able to kind of really establish and extend that relationship and and not have it be a one and done project. And and also, I I think just in general, you know, being naturally curious, I really love how flexible and configurable Anaplan is. And I try to use that, you know, to my advantage to really get a better understanding of, you know, different parts of the business where I think, you know, Anaplan would be helpful. And lastly, you know, I, I would say really building authentic relationships. I kind of see this now with my personal life where that that circle gets, you know, smaller and smaller. And I think it's also very relatable, you know, to your professional network. Instead of casting like that wide net in terms of networking, I think it's really more effective to really just kind of focus on a few 
select folks, you know, whether you're the, the mentee or the mentor in that relationship. I think you just laid out a list there that is pure gold. Master your technical skills. You got to be able to do the job, right? You have to be able to build the model, to architect the design, and you've got to be able to do it well. And then seeing the bigger picture. To me, when I heard seeing the bigger picture and connecting the dots, that's all about being able to communicate and being able to be the translator between the technical and the business that's using the tool and kind of that people change management process in the middle of it all, right? Because everything we do starts with people. Technology is not a silver bullet. You can't just buy in a plan and expect it to solve all your problems. People still have to use the tool. So seeing the bigger picture is key there. And then I love that, that naturally curious mentality. We've heard that a couple of times on this question from folks recently. It cannot be overstated that curiosity is what will lead us into just excellence in whatever that it is that we do, right? We, if, we, if we're curious and we're always getting better, we're always learning. And that's huge. And then I love the, yeah, the fourth one, authentic relationships, right? And that kind of goes back to what you talked about earlier, leading and influencing an industry and building those real relationships built on trust, built on credibility, getting to know folks, right? We don't want to work alone. We are relational creatures at our core. So getting to know people beyond work helps you be more effective in work. I think that's awesome. So I love it. That, that, that is the unfair career advantage today. Kevin, one more other question for you on this one. When you think about what you guys have done at Navon, what's maybe a commonly held belief about finance transformation and plan implementations that you passionately disagree with and why? Yeah. You know, I don't know if I would say passionately disagree, but you know, I think often there's a, a misconception that finance transformation is a straight line. When I often hear that phrase, I go back to my consulting days where it's that buzzword that you have to include in this pitch deck and that deck clearly lays out the timeline, breaks it out into different phases and, you know, sprints up the project and, you know, overall just everything is clearly defined, right? And if you're a company that might not have that resources uh, to have this multi, you know, multi-year, multi-million dollar project, finance transformation can really be as simple as, you know, first getting your data clean. Right. Can my users uh, rely on this data? Can we establish data governance around our master data or establish a process? Right. And after that, maybe now you're better suited to, to bring in a, a tool like Anaplan to be, to be able to automate things. That's good. I, it makes me think about start where you are, right? Like you said, finance transformation might be getting your data clean, making sure your data is trustworthy. And I think especially when you move down into the mid-market, that's probably the case as a consultant is figuring out where is this company? Is Anaplan the right tool for them right now, right? Or do we need to get some foundational things in place before we can even begin to think about making an investment into a tool like Anaplan because you are or you're not ready for it. Whereas I'm sure, I know Fortune 500 is probably you're replacing an existing tool. So that can just look a little bit different. Those conversations are different. Kevin, so you obviously, you know, Early career, maybe starting to approach getting into middle career, you're established, you kind of know the lane you're going down, but I want you to fast forward to the end of your career really quickly. What kind of an impact do you want to have with your career? Yeah, obviously still very young in my career, but, you know, I have, I have future ambitions to, you know, lead an entire team, an entire department, service line, whatever you want to call it, or even maybe an entire company, right? I still definitely have that, you know, entre entrepreneurial spirit in me for sure. At the end of the day, I think the, the type of impact that I want to have is to, you know, be remembered as a, a servant leader and also a people focused leader. In my opinion, I think the best leaders are the ones that not only have that strategic and tactical plan to be able to accomplish whatever it is they're trying to accomplish, but also have a, a good understanding of, you know, what's the emotional reaction I need for my team to be able to accomplish this goal. You know, to use sports as an analogy, it's, it's kind of like, how do I get my team to run through a, a brick wall for their teammates, right? So I think that EQ component is very important to becoming a great leader. That's great. A servant leader and a people-focused leader, that's real impact. I think anyone who's ever done anything in their career, that's remarkable, can probably point to someone who was that person for them. You know, that leader who elevated them, that leader who invested in them. We can't get there alone. So it's cool that you kind of want to be that catalyst for folks as you continue to advance your career. So Kevin, you're leading Anaplan at Navon. Got a really strong consulting background behind you. Tell me 
what's what's kind of next for you? What's your next big hairy audacious goal that you're going after? It could be personal, could be professional, but what are you what are you chasing down right now? Yeah, so I'll break it down into, you know, professional versus personal. I guess to start with uh, short term professionally, definitely want to, you know, continue this connected planning journey at Navon, but, you know, want to expand our, our current use cases and really establish a strong center of excellence. I want other companies to look at Navon as the gold standard when it comes to, you know, connected planning. I thought, thought it was re really cool that you had a guest not too long ago. I think her name was Haley Hay. Uh, yeah. you know, but she won like the, the Anna Plan, you know, CEO, Center of Excellence Leader of the Year Award. Yep. Uh, which I thought was really cool. So, you know, I thought it'd be cool to, to win it one day or be part of the discussion. And, you know, personally, I've always been an avid traveler. I had this, this goal of hitting 30 countries by, by 30 years old. You know, obviously COVID had different plans, but I actually just turned, you know, 30 this past summer, which is both exciting and depressing at the same time. Um, <laughs> So now that goal's turned into, you know, 30 countries by, by 30 years old plus five, you know, so definitely have a, a lot of catching up. Okay. That's cool. How many countries are you at right now? I think I'm at 21 or 22, low twenties. Okay. What's the next one on the list for you? Yeah. So for the holiday break, I'm actually going to Japan, Tokyo specifically. And so that'll be my first stop in Japan and then going to the Philippines. So that's actually where I was born, immigrated here to the U.S. when I was seven years old. So going back to, to see some family during the holiday. That's awesome. That's super, super cool. So Kevin, last question for you. Where can people find you if they want to continue this conversation? Yeah, I think that the easiest would be LinkedIn, Kevin Moreno. I don't think there's, you know, a lot of us, so it would be easy to find me. Kevin Moreno from the Ohio State University. Yeah, don't forget the the. <laughs> That's right. That's key. Man, thank you for the time. Thank you for sharing some of your insights and what you've learned along your journey. I think this is super valuable. And we will catch you later. Sounds good. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Wherever you're consuming this, if it's YouTube, if it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, we appreciate you. Make sure you're subscribed. We have a lot more amazing guests on the way, a lot more great content. We're doing our best to bring you value and have fun while we do it. And we really want this to be a career advantage listening to this show and we want you to enjoy it. So it means a lot. Make sure you're subscribed for what's, what's to come. And also, if you're up for it, it would mean a lot if you leave us a like, a comment, a rating, a review, whatever platform you're on. That really helps and it gets us fired up when we see those. So I appreciate you guys. Find us on LinkedIn. I'm Blake Bozarth, my co-host Chad Pike with a Y. Would love to connect with you there. Have an awesome day. See you next time. Peace.